more than 60 Palestinian martyrs fall during the past 24 hours as a result of the savage Israeli aggression on the Gaza Strip. Moscow, President al-Assad's speech stresses the necessity of a ripening national cohesion that serves the country's interests. Syrian Arab army units target terrorist gatherings in al qunaitira homes and Aleppo, killing and wounding scores of terrorists. Iran and Group 5 plus 1 agree on extending talks for four months to reach final agreement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Russia said that President Bashar al-Assad's speech drove home a message about the necessity of a ripening national cohesion that serves the country's interests, rebuilding and continuation of anti-terrorism efforts at this critical juncture of Syria's history. Commenting on the speech that President al-Assad delivered after taking the oath for a new term in office, the Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement, it is exceptionally important amid the current conditions in Syria to keep state institutions functioning for the sake of having humanitarian situation improved, which according to the ministry was confirmed by President al-Assad's inauguration ceremony. The statement added that the political and military situation in Syria remains tense amid multiplying terrorist brutal crimes, peaceful people getting killed and social and economic infrastructures destroyed. The statement added that in this context developments have been happening in terms of the government's stances for solving the humanitarian issues of crisis hit citizens, broadening the scope of national reconciliations and an amnesty decree still in effect. Captives from the occupied Syrian Golan who are detained in the Israeli Shatta prison issued a statement in which they affirmed that they stand behind the leadership of President Bashar al-Assad and are committed to standing fast in the face of occupation. In the statement, the captives voiced confidence that Syria will be victorious over terrorism, saluting the homeland, Syria's civilian and army martyrs, the Syrian Arab army and President Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian leadership. They congratulated the Syrian people on the success of the presidential elections and on choosing President al-Assad to lead them, asserting that victory over terrorists is imminent. Minister of Justice Dr. Najm al-Ahmad said, Syria is pushing ahead with combating terrorism until security and stability prevail anew. Al-Ahmad, who was speaking during his meeting with economic and social figures and directors in Deir ez-Zor, proclaimed that the crisis in Syria is in its final stages, with Syria well on course to recovery. The minister added that a project to grant governors extra powers to overhaul provincial councils by appointing council members during extraordinary circumstances is under study. The participants laid down their demands that focused on invigorating local reconciliations in the province, reducing the power rationing hours and delivering humanitarian aid to those in need. In their resort, the Syrian Arab Armed Forces, in cooperation with the National Defense Forces, controlled the villages of Ayash and Ain Abu Jum'a to the west of the governorate. Syrian Arab Army units eliminated scores of terrorists and destroyed their ammunition. In al qunaitira countryside, units of the Syrian Arab Army foiled an attempt by about 40 terrorists to infiltrate from Harish Tarunja towards Dahr al kassar targeting their gatherings in Ovana town, Abu Shatta, and on the road of Umbatni and Al-Ajraf, as a number of the terrorists were killed and others were injured.
In the Iraq countryside, Syrian Arab army units targeted the gatherings of terrorists in several areas as a number of them were killed and others were injured, while a number of their vehicles were destroyed. A number of the terrorists were also eliminated by the Syrian Arab army units in Tafas town near the Fuj Bridge in an Nuaimi town to the south of Mzerib town and in Atiba town, while a number of their vehicles were demolished in the Iraq countryside. In Iraq, the security forces, with the help of volunteers, cleared the last stronghold for Daesh in al Latifa to the west of the capital, Baghdad. A security source clarified that the volunteers and the security forces tied their grip over Shakha, the last stronghold for Daesh in al Latifa, as the security forces killed large numbers of them and seized their equipment. Israeli occupation forces continued their brutal aggression on Gaza amid Arab international official silence. Israel raided different areas in the Strip, claiming the lives of 15 Palestinians and wounding many others. With the new raids today, death toll among the Palestinians rose to 313 and 2,250 wounded. The ongoing aggression has inflicted massive damage on the infrastructure, cutting off water and electricity to thousands of health plus an armed resident. By launching its ground invasion into the Gaza Strip, the Israeli occupation forces have added a new barbarous crimes to its notorious record amid reports of them using internationally banned smoke and poisonous bombs. In response, the Palestinian resistance continued targeting Israeli sites and settlements with rockets and missiles and announced its complete preparedness to face the land invasion. Finally, Iran, I plus one group, agreed on extending the negotiation period another four months in order to reach a final agreement concerning Iran's nuclear program. This announcement came in the 17th day of the nuclear negotiations in Austria, noting that today was the end of the six-month deadline, which was determined before, according to Geneva statement. However, both sides could never reach a final agreement for this matter, despite the intense negotiations during the six months, but there was a progress in other raised issues, so it was necessary to expand the negotiation period. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Minister of Domestic Trade, Samir Qadi Amin, paid an inspection visit to Al Midan Market in Damascus. He also stressed the importance of providing the citizens with high quality products at affordable prices. The Russian government revealed that Russia and Syria are determined to cooperate in the customs sector and that the two sides are expected to sign an agreement on cooperative and mutual administrative assistance in the field of customs. Russian websites said that the government approved the draft of this agreement, which will tackle issues such as customs fees, adherence to restrictions and supervision of the movement of goods, and the steps taken by the two sides to facilitate and speed up the movement of goods between them, in addition to exchanging information on individuals whose activities may lead to infringe infringements. Sorry. Director of the Agricultural Marketing Department at the Ministry of Agriculture asserted the importance of the exhibition of rural women products and small companies is helping to shed the light on those products and small companies. In addition to supporting the national strategies to develop such projects in order to overcome the obstacles during the current conditions. Moreover, he added that the Agricultural Marketing Directorate is committed to working on promoting the agricultural products in cooperation with the concerned parties to find marketing opportunities both locally and internationally. The Agricultural Cooperative Bank branch in Al Hasake Governorate has started distributing the first installment of the marketing cereals value for the season to the cereal center in Khamishli Governorate. 
On the other hand, director of the branch said that 75 million Syrian pounds have been transferred to the branch, in addition to 615 bills with a worth of 800 million Syrian pounds. The General Establishment for Cereal Processing and Trade has announced that marketing process of wheat and barley is still on progress. While the Director General of the establishment said that total marketing quantities have declined to reach about 500 tons a day. He also added that the second shipment of the delivered cereals hit 10 billion Syrian pounds, which has been distributed among the farmers. Furthermore, the transferred money to the establishment and amounted to 20 billion Syrian pounds. The Regional Planning Directorate in Latakia Governorate has focused on the environmental requirements in its studies in order to support launching small projects. According to the Directorate, the environmental requirements aim at improving the economic and social reality to achieve sustainable development through supporting the small projects which play a major role in the process of economic and social development. The weekly trading value of Damascus Securities Exchange has exceeded 70,850,000 Syrian pounds, while the trading value reached 523,360 shares, as the DSE index declined three points to reach 1,321 points. On the other hand, the banking sector ranked first, followed by the insurance sector, then the industrial one. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This was our economic news for today. Bye-bye.